Duck Life, a childhood classic. Released in 2010, it made the early years of numerous people's lives special. And I've decided to continue that trend and remake the game in scratch, one of the easiest programming languages. Gameplay is very straightforward. You have a duck which you train to become the fastest. Training is done by playing a mini game for each of running, flying, and swimming discipline. On the first glance, you will think that such simple game will not require much effort, especially when using Scratch, easiest programming language. But I have never been so wrong. But first, we need a concept art. This is our starting point. And with this plan in hand, we can now start creating the graphics for the ducks. Duck have four parts. Body, eye, pig and legs. Now when we can draw a duck... Mm, now when we can draw a proper duck, next is to add collisions. Now there is a problem. If you have paid attention, you will notice that our duck is drawn using pen extension and objects rendered with pen extension can't detect collisions. You may ask, why did you not use clones? Clones can detect collisions. Listen closely what I'm about to say. Never use clones. Trust me, okay? So, how we will implement collisions then? Let me explain how collisions in Scratch work. There are two main ways of detecting collisions in Scratch. The first one is using sensing blocks, and second one is manually writing custom collisions. For this one, I will use sensing blocks because it's hard to write custom collisions for complex shapes, which is actually the case with ground. But in order to use sensing blocks, you must fulfill some conditions. First, only things which can collide are scratch objects with another scratch objects. Second, you can't check collision against specific clone. And last, both scratch objects must be shown while colliding. We render ducks using pen extension, which means I hid the sprite because all rendering is done manually. For this reason, we cannot detect collision. The solution is quite simple. In no refresh custom block, first show the object, check collision, and then hide the object. This method is known on Scratch as hitbox collision, because you can use whatever costume you want for collision detection, while for rendering, you can switch to another. After using some game dev magic, Walking now. <laughs> Next thing on the list is scrolling. Scrolling is method where view space is limited to one specific part of world, which is exactly case in Duck Life. The way it works is that each object have its global position, which is used for game logic, and view position, which is used for drawing. Only thing we need to do is to calculate view position based on global position. And we do that by adding variable scroll x and subtracting that from the global x position. But this method have one tiny problem while used on Scratch. You see, Scratch prevents objects from being drawn outside of view. This is done so kids using Scratch doesn't get confused if object disappears from the view. But this is problem for me. Fortunately, there is a hack which can solve this. Since we can't draw a whole map using only one costume, we need a way to render multiple of them. We are going to use clones. But wait, didn't I just said... Never use clones. Trust me, okay? But don't worry, I am going to replace them in future. I just wanted to prove you why you should not use them on practical example. Before that, 
Let's add multiple duck support. This task is surprisingly simple. Just instead of using variables, use lists. And then iterate through each duck and you have multiple ducks. Now, are you thinking what I am thinking? Exactly. Duck. After implementing swimming and flying, I should really stop saying that. After properly implementing swimming and flying, we can continue. Now we can start. Wait a moment. Where is my duck? We have a huge problem. And you quest it. Clones. Let me explain. Actually, no way I am gonna animate this. Just read this obnoxiously large explanation. Now it's working flawlessly even if ducks aren't in view. After implementing necessary UI, let's start implementing training minigames. For a running minigame, duck is constantly moving right, while logs are rolling towards you, which you need to jump over. The more you play, the faster the duck is. This is the case for each minigame. After implementing a generic runner game, worse version of Flappy Bird and this mess, we can start implementing the experience meters for our training. Most importantly, energy system. To increase your energy, you buy food for 5 coins. You get coins by collecting them in any of the minigames. Energy is like a timer in racing mode, which is slowly ticking off. And you go to sleep if the timer runs out. Next, we will add cosmetic. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost. The comrades I've lost won't stop hurting. Actually, I think there are more important things. Now on end of level, there is a flag which indicates where is the end. I definitely had absolutely no difficulties implementing this. Now it's time to add levels. There will be total 10 levels, first 3 in grassland biome, next 3 in desert, after that 3 city levels. And I know guys, graphic design is my passion. Wait, what about the 10th level? Well, that's a secret you'll have to find out yourself. Nevertheless, now we can add longly expected cosmetics. <laughs> Who I'm kidding? I don't want to spend single more second on this. On this... Um...